Okay, so time for another project, and I think this one will be easy, but we'll see how it goes. Um, this information center thing hasn't really worked since we got the coach. Uh, the battery voltage works. The holding tank mm, kind of works. Um, it does seem to move and go up as we have more waste in the, the waste tank. Uh, I'm going to like kind of hold off on that and see if it uh, seems to be okay as we use the coach more. But the freshwater tank has never worked and the LP gas has never worked. And so right now it's showing above full and if I do a system check, it just goes all the way up to the top. Kind of like the holding tank goes all the way to the bottom. So it could be a problem with the gauge. It could be a problem with the wiring. It could be a problem with the sender out at the uh, propane tank. This is the one I'm going to work on today is the, is the propane. I did some testing out at the tank itself and the sensor at the tank is supposed to have 90 ohms of resistance and when I test the one that I have it shows open so even though I have half a tank of propane it, it's showing no signal at all no resistance and I'm, I'm testing it right at the gauge itself not the wiring or anything else and so I think something has failed inside of the gauge I got a new gauge and it is showing uh, 90 ohms right now at uh, it's indicating empty and so um, it's not registering open at all it's giving me a reasonable reading so I think at the very least the gauge out at the tank is bad and so I need to replace that and then hopefully the wiring and this gauge and, and everything else will be okay I did take this whole thing apart and clean the connections and put a little dielectric grease on them and make sure that everything looked okay back there. I didn't see anything that looked like it was you know, uh, coming apart, broken, anything like that. So uh, the project is to replace the gauge out at the tank, wire that in, and see if this gauge starts working. All right, we're back here at the tank, and this is the, the gauge right here. Uh, there's a wiring harness that comes down from inside the coach, runs down here, one wire goes to the gauge, the other wire goes to ground. Um, when I tested this, I tested right at the gauge and this wire, uh, rather than trusting the ground through the tank to this wire down here. Um, and I was getting nothing, it was an open circuit, and so I, I think maybe there's something that's failed inside of this. The new gauge that I got is showing um, actually it's showing full so I'm getting 90 ohms at full um, inside I said that I was getting 90 ohms at, at empty so apparently empty would be uh, a short I guess uh, but this has two wires and so I should be able to just wire these directly into the the signal and ground that I have here and it should screw right in it looks like the same size I got this from applied GMC which is where I usually get my parts that I want to make sure fit the coach. Um, so uh, I'll do a link in the description for this. I think it was $75, something like that. Um, it was a pretty consistent price with other places that I saw similar gauges, but this one was a little bit different. I wanted to make sure I got what would fit. Okay, so we've got the new gauge installed and I'll make a point here, there's just two screws that hold this in, one at the top, one at the bottom. I think there are some other styles that have like a, a snap ring or something. Um, it's important that you're just taking out the screws that hold the gauge because this whole assembly, these four big screws out here, are actually part of the tank. And so when I took out the two screws and removed the old gauge, it's sealed there. Uh, there's some kind of a magnet type of uh, interface to what's on the inside of the tank here. And so I, I could do this with a full tank. It was no big deal. Um, the new gauge now is reading about half a tank, which is what the old one was reading. So that's good. Um, I probed the wires to see what my output is. And I mentioned that it was at 90 ohms when it was reading full uh, before I connected things. Uh, now it's reading half a tank and I'm getting about 50 ohm uh, 
measurement. And so uh, where my other gauge was reading open, I'm now getting a signal from the gauge, so that's good. The bad news is that the gauge in the coach is still behaving the same way that it was. So this is easy to read and it's giving me a good signal now and so I know this is okay, but there's still some other problem in the circuit that I'll need to, to do some more testing with. So I'll have some more information on that. Um, I did just uh, some heat shrink on the connections here, uh, a little dielectric and a barrel connector, uh, put some flex bloom stuff around it to protect the wires. So back here, I think this is all done and we'll just have to keep working to figure out where the rest of the problems are. Okay, well, so we got the gauge installed and I measured the impedance out there at the gauge and it was showing me 50 ohms. So it's working now before I was getting an open signal out of the gauge. But when I came in here, and pushed the button, it's still doing the same thing it was doing. So I have a new gauge on the tank. It's easier to read. I know that I'm getting a good signal out of it, but somewhere between there and here, there's still a problem. Um, I did some, I, I pulled this apart and did some testing on the gauge itself, and I've got 12 volts to it. And when I test the signal, it shows open. And so I tested it both at this panel and it showed open. I also tested it at the wiring harness coming into the panel also showed open. And so there's apparently a broken wire somewhere between here and the tank back in the back. At least I know I have a good signal coming off the tank, which I didn't have before. So I fixed one problem, but there's still another problem. So. I think I'll make another video when I have some time to trace the wiring and try to track down where the real problem is. Okay, so I thought I'd give you a little bit of behind the scenes of my wiring troubleshooting. And I'd mentioned that I'd replaced the gauge out there at the propane tank, but that the little uh, indicator of the gauge at the information center was not working. And so I started tracing that back and I've got a signal, so the wires from the propane tank come up here. I've got a good signal that goes along um, kind of behind the bathroom, um, but then I don't have a signal up at the information center. And so uh, somewhere there's a broken wire. We also have a problem with the water level uh, tank not reading. And so I started testing that also, and I found that at the tank, I didn't have ground, so this ground wasn't connected to any of the other ground, and I didn't have a, I guess, another signal wire so that I could get the impedance across that gauge on the back of the water tank. Um, as I started pulling this out to try to find out what happened, I found that a mouse had chewed through this along with the wiring harness and several other wires. And so I think I need to sort out some of my wiring problems there from some mouse, maybe years in the past, because this hasn't worked for as long as we've had the coach, and rewire some of this. And so just to give you an idea of what I've had to take out here, um, we didn't have a cabinet behind this, and so that was pretty easy, but I did have to take the, the settee couch out, the frame, the housing, everything for the water tank. I had to loosen the water tank. Um, so I've kind of had to tear into things to get to a point where I can start running some new wire. But the idea is I'm going to run new wire. I'm going to use new flex looming. Uh, I'm going to just basically rewire things to this area and make sure that I'm getting a good signal from each of these sending units up to the gauge at the information center. Okay. We have a working propane gauge. We also have a working water level gauge. And so I showed a little bit of what I had to tear apart in the back to trace the wiring and things. Um, I pulled a fair bit of wiring out and found that some of this is mouse chewed. Some of these ground wires were completely chewed up and rusted or all corroded. Um, so obviously quite a few problems. I took out uh, everything that looked like a problem. I rewired some things. So in the case of the water tank, uh, 
I was able to just basically replace from where a mouse had eaten back to the sensor. I rewired a little bit of the pump back there also because the wiring had been kind of crimped together in several places and in one case the wire was almost completely broken and so I just wanted to replace all of that. Um, I got some nice wire loom, I got some fabric automotive tape to help wrap things up and tried to protect the wiring and make it as, as similar to original as possible. But let's take a look at the gauge here and then I'll show a little bit of my wiring I did. So before, when we turned on the system monitor here, the propane gauge would go all the way to the top and the water tank would go all the way to the bottom. And the water is empty. The propane has about half a tank. So when I turn this on, well, they don't move very much because they were already kind of at the right spot. Voltage you can see is pretty good, but they're not pegging anymore. And I've tested all the way up to this and I'm getting reasonable measurements from the sending units now. So I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, this will be the first time that these things have worked since we've owned the coach. And based on the, the condition of some of the wiring and the, the mouse damage, it could have been like this for a long time. So I feel pretty good about that. Let's go outside and I'll show a little bit of the wiring I did. So the wiring from the back kind of comes along here behind the bathroom counter. So kind of where the water tank is. So other than having to tear things apart in the back, I had to take the cabinet out from under the sink and uh, reach in there and get to some of that wiring. The wiring then goes up and along the top to that information center. And I, there was no way I could get to that without having probably taking out the refrigerator and um, doing, a, doing a bunch of work. And so I could fix the water sending unit in the back just by replacing the piece that the, the mouse had chewed on. But for the propane tank, I had to run a new wire up to that because I couldn't find the problem. There was a signal all the way up to here, but there was some break up kind of behind the fridge. And so I ran a new wire in here with the wiring for the refrigerator. So I ran it in the same wire loom. I got kind of a cool plastic connector here. And so I took the wire for the propane sender and brought it in this other loom up kind of inside the refrigerator cabinet in the back here up to the, the sending unit up front. And so the wire is all protected. It shouldn't get crimped or pinched or chewed on. And so um, I'm hoping that I won't have any more problems with this and we'll now have a working information center.